Unit 1, Lesson D, deals with classifying numbers to its number set. And hopefully at the end of this lesson you could say, yes, I can classify a number according to its set, or sets. There will be multiple ones. So here are all the different number sets. We have natural numbers, which are numbers that are used in counting. If I asked you to count to 5, most likely you would start with 1 and go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So there's no 0, no negative numbers, no decimals or fractions. Okay. The only difference between whole numbers and natural numbers, if you look at the example numbers here, right there, we include 0 now in whole numbers. So 1 is both a natural number and a whole number, plus some other things as we'll see. Integers, all right, notice it says all the whole numbers, including negatives, still no fractions or decimals. Okay, so notice again, you see the, the trend here, okay, we had our natural numbers right here. All right, they're still there. We had our additional whole number, and now we have all these guys included as well. Still no decimals or fractions. All right, our rational numbers are all of the above, so all of these things, plus now we finally get the decimals and fractions. Okay, a very simple definition of rational numbers is quite simply a number that can be written as a fraction. All right, irrational numbers. want to point this one out to you, all right, None of the above. Okay, so none of these things are irrational. All right, which brings me to this diagram that we have down here. All right, in the diagram, notice that irrational numbers are placed off to the side. We use the letter I for short, so you don't have to write that out. Over to this side, we have our natural numbers, which are inside of our whole numbers, which is inside of the integers, which is inside of the rational numbers, which is all part of the real number system. All right, so both of these, irrational and irrational, are, are part of the real number system. Okay, the key here is if something's a natural number, if something's over here, it can't be irrational. If it's irrational, it can't be any of these things. All right, so let's kind of take a look at our real number system and try to place these numbers where they belong. The number three. If I ask you to count to three, very simple, one, two, three, okay, uh, the fact that you count naturally to it makes it a natural number. So we would say that it's a natural number, and because it's a natural number, it's all of the above. All right, so it's a whole number, it's an integer, it's a rational number, and it's a real number. All right? Now, the square root of three, before we do this, type this into your calculator. And you find out when you do this, the square root of 3 is some random decimal that just goes all the way to the end of the screen. It goes to the end of your screen because at some point the screen's got to stop. All right, we understand our screens can't go to infinity. All right, so somewhere they have to stop and get rounded. All right, because it's not repeating, it goes all the way to the end of the screen. That's usually your key that it's an irrational number. All right, so irrational numbers we say our i, but there still are. Everything's going to be r, okay? So, so far, let me change my color here, we had a 3 here, we had a root 3 here, all right? Next, we have negative 0 0.06. Now, a lot of times, people see the negative and they go right to the integers, but keep in mind, integers are still whole numbers, all right? So, while it's negative, all right, it's not an integer, it's just a rational number because I could write 0 0.06 as a fraction. If you don't trust me, if you don't believe me, what you do is take your calculator, your graphing calculator, type in neg negative 0 0.06. There's a button that says math on it, and then hit enter twice. So math, enter, enter, and that'll convert it to a fraction for you to prove it. All right, so we had negative 0 0.06 starting there. And again, wherever we start, we take everything above. So it's rational and real. All right, negative 10 is next. Negative 10, we wouldn't start with counting with negatives. It's not a whole number, it's an integer. So we would call that Z, Q, R. All right, so that's where negative 10 goes. All right, do you try problem, of course, you'll do in class tomorrow? Let's move on to example two. Which of the following does not represent a rational number and explain why? 
Okay, so definition of a rational number is a number that can be written as a fraction. So if it's a fraction, we know it's rational. So that's not our answer. Any whole number can be written as a fraction quite simply by putting a 1 under it. And because I could do that, we know that's rational. Point 0.3 repeating is 1 third. Okay, repeating decimals can be written as fractions. All right, so we know that's not our answer. 0.25 is 25 hundredths, so 25 over 100, there's a fraction, not the answer. The square root of 7, if you type that into your calculator, you're going to get some kind of crazy decimal that goes to the end without repeating. We have our winner. Why? Again, because the answer, that decimal, cannot be written as a fraction. So the square root of 7 cannot be written in fraction form. All right, let's move on. There's the you try. We'll do it in class tomorrow. And then the last one, it says, carefully read and answer each question. You are finding the area of a circle. Why will your answer always be an approximation? Well, first of all, finding the area of a circle, there's a formula that says the area of a circle is equal to pi times the radius squared. Okay. If you know what the radius is, let's just use an example. 2, for example. 2 squared is 4. 4 times pi. Put that in your calculator. You're going to get some long decimal answer. So the reason why your answer will always be an approximation is because pi is irrational. Therefore, all calculations... using pi will be approximate answers. Alright, there's a you try for you to do uh, in class tomorrow. And then remember, after watching the statement, I can, you need to write something here or you're not getting credit. Okay, these two may or may not be needed okay but remember if you have one alright like I don't know how to classify numbers then you should circle like I'm gonna rewatch this video or I'm gonna ask a friend or something else alright to let us show that you're trying something else to learn see you in class tomorrow